not as bad when you know that it's coming. So what are we doing right now, Katie? We are... Uh, Charles is going to show me his weapon collection. My chin just drops. I've never seen so much. So many weapons. <laughs> so many weapons. And How come you've got so many weapons? Well, a lot of these I my grandfather collected guns. Oh, okay. So a lot of these are from him. Uh, he liked to collect revolvers. Mm. And these are a lot of old... Uh, rifles from uh, World War One and World War Two. So a lot of them I inherited, like I said. So all the wood wooden rifles are from my grandfather. The only weapon that is loaded is this one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Jeez, Charles. <laughs> I mostly wear one because I dr I travel around for work. So. Oh, okay. So much. There's so many crazy people, but I made sure they're all unloaded. Besides, like I said, mm. this one is this loaded. One. Thanks, it's loaded. Yeah. I like the style of the old one. It's quite heavy, although it's empty. Well, it's not empty. It's no, a... it's not. Ooh. So have you ever shot? No, I can't remember. Have you ever held a gun? Yeah, I think so, but I'm not sure. Because my... It's unloaded. Oh, I've got a weapon in my hand. So this is a Walther P99. It's actually made in Germany. Is it? Yep. Uh, it's, it's a, a Walter. Walter, yeah. yeah. So this one's a little weird for a, a pistol because it's an AS trigger system. So if you pull the trigger... Can I pull it? Can, yeah, it's not loaded. <gasps> it's a really heavy trigger pull, right? Yeah. And then what it is, is it was made for German police or military. So whenever you shoot it, it's it, it's an AS trigger, which stands for anti-stress. The first trigger pull is like a 10-pound trigger pull. Yeah. And then say if you shoot it and actually cock like it would when you shoot it, the next trigger pull, if you pull it now... Is super light and that's like a three and a half four pound trigger why do pull. they do that again so like if if you draw your weapon and you're aiming at somebody yeah. and you're nervous they don't want you to accidentally pull the trigger right so it's got that really hard trigger pull oh, that makes but sense. then when you decide to shoot the next shot it's got a small reset and a yeah. three pound trigger pull the one you have in here is it's a nine millimeter also so it shoots okay nine millimeter rounds like this right so it's a little bit Smaller than a 40, which is what that one is, mm, a 40 caliber. Mm. How do you learn how to shoot it? Um, like, there's, you can take classes. Yeah. Um, or around here, most people have a family member that already knows how to shoot. So sure. they'll learn from them, which probably isn't the best. But yeah, they have basic pistol courses and stuff like that. Right. This one's... Oof. Okay. Like whenever I took my concealed and carry so I can carry... A weapon on me yeah. we had to take a class yeah go over safety and laws yeah and then we had to go do a shooting test to make sure we could actually shoot yeah well enough sense. to carry um but now in missouri you don't have to do that you can just carry mm. uh, that worries me a bit yeah which in in missouri a lot of state uh cities in missouri you could already open carry which means the gun had to be visible yeah so the people knew you were carrying it mm. um but with a concealing carry you you have to conceal it okay. so nobody can see it. And like I said, I, I originally got mine because I've had incidences at work when I'm downtown or something where yeah. somebody starts bothering me or trying to do something. The AR. Uh, I built this. This is my you built this. rifle that I take to the range to shoot for fun mostly. Mm. Um, it's an AR-15. Caliber is two two three. Four, five, five, six. This is a, the barrel on this is a two, two, three wild, which means it's specifically made to shoot both. There is a difference. There's a slight difference. Though. Um, it's got a Vortex Viper PST scope, two and a half by ten by forty-four. I think is what it is. Uh, with a quick detach mount, so I can take it off easily. And I got sight forty-five degree iron sights, so the scope is to shoot from fifty yards out. And then the iron sights, you can can the gun like that and shoot okay. through the iron sights. So just rest your chin on that. Yep. Also unloaded. So. Mm. Tapping. Oh yes. So how, how am I going to hold that one? You would you would hold it like this, and you'd rest it against your shoulder. Oh, okay. Because when you shoot it, it would recoil, and you want yeah. that to impact your shoulder. If you have it slightly off your shoulder, this. This gun doesn't recoil for much of anything. That 30 out six 
if you were say were holding it too far like a far away from your shoulder yeah. you could bruise your shoulder you yeah. could dislocate it or it could pop up and hit you in the mouth you. and people have broken their jaw so it just actually rested in there yeah like right you can still feel it though when you shoot right yeah this one doesn't kick very hard at all because it's two two three so the bullets okay. are pretty That's small really heavy are you yeah. supposed to hold it like that yeah well this one i usually bench shoot so it's got a bipod on it so it would oh, okay yeah. set on a table kind of like this uh, okay. but you can get forward grips where there would be some sort of grip up here that yeah. you hold uh, when I shoot, since it's on the table, I, I grab the front right here, and there's a magazine. Yeah. Which is... Gosh, you have to be really strong to hold that. Right here. So, the it's broken into two parts. You got the takedown pins, and then the rifle comes apart like this. Mm. This is a lower receiver. This is what's considered the firearm. It's what has a serial number on it. And what is, when you purchase it, you have to get it from a federally licensed firearms dealer. They do a background check to make sure that you're allowed to own a firearm. Mm -hmm. And then this is the upper, which is the barrel, the chamber that the round goes into, uh, the bolt carrier group, which has a firing pin and everything in it. Um, and that you can buy without any check. You can have this mailed straight to your house, which is what I did. Mm. <clears throat> so this is the only part they actually pay attention to. Okay. Which is funny, because in America, you can also buy these an 80% lower, which what, on an 80% lower, this part would already be finished. Um, but all of this would still be a solid piece of metal and you can get those mailed directly to your house because they're not considered a firearm yet yeah. And then you can use a special jig and drill this out to fit and build it And then there's no record that you ever owned or bought a firearm at all Sneaky. With those though, you have to keep them. It's legal to own them, yeah. but you can't sell them You can't give them to anybody. Right. Nothing. It's your gun for life If you don't use it you have to store it or yeah. destroy it in some way. So there wouldn't be a serial number on that, huh? Right. No. By law, you're supposed to serialize them. I'm pretty sure. So pretty much you you could manufacture your own assault rifles if you wanted to. Yeah, but you couldn't sell them. Right. Without any, you would have to have some sort of license okay. to, to manufacture and sell a firearm. So you don't have a serial number on it? This one does, because it, it yeah. came as a full unit. Yeah. I went and bought this from a... I bought this online, got shipped to a dealer, and then they did the background yeah, check. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, the serial number is right there. But yeah, it came bare. I put the trigger in it, all these switches, the magazine release, the pens, mm. uh, all of this, the grip on mm -hmm. there, all that. So it just came as a chunk of metal. Yeah. It's an expensive chunk of metal. I think it was like 350 bucks. Ooh. So you just go and shoot this for fun. Yeah, could definitely be used for self-defense, but I don't plan on needing to shoot more than one person in my house, hopefully. Hopefully, yeah. And I usually have a pistol on me, so unless something really goes crazy, yeah. this will stay in the safe. But yeah, I take it to the range. We have a, a range right out here yeah. called Lake City that's owned by Missouri Conservation Department. So yeah. the same people that regulate hunting and everything. Right. And they have, a, I think it's a 50 to 100 yard range, or mm. 25 to 100 yard range. And I usually go out and shoot it okay. at 100 yards. It's accurate out to 500 yards. With mm. good ammo, I can shoot through the same hole at 100 yards. So. Wow. Do you go hunting? I don't go hunting because I don't want to clean the animal. Yeah. But I would love to go hunting. That's originally why I bought this rifle. Okay. And it's a 30 out 6 with a scope. It's not loaded at all. Uh, that's fancy. Let me just have a look at it first. I'll just go around pulling triggers. Oh, I told it was unloaded. Yeah, but. <laughs> I'm just making a shot. I still wouldn't pull the trigger. Yeah. So let's just. Hmm. Because you guys aren't allowed to own firearms, right? Mm -mm. You have to have a license for it. And there's states in America where you have to register every firearm you own. Okay. But a lot of them you don't. Do you know which ones? No. <laughs> Glock is from Austria, which is super popular. Yeah. Company originated in uh, Czechoslovakia. Mm hmm. Uh, but now they have an office in Kansas City. Did they really? Yeah. <laughs> Which is pretty cool. Oh, this is a 6.35 millimeter. So Whatever tiny. that is. But it has a little magazine, too. So you pull the thing back here and it yeah. slides out. Reload, reload. See, instead of my 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 pepper spray they took away from me, I can just... Put that in your pocket. Just, take a, just have a pocket weapon, huh? Yeah, oh, some yeah. people have those. <laughs> Look, okay, it fits easily into my hand. Okay, my hand is black, quite big, but still. Uh, <laughs> cool. There you go. 
<laughs> oh wow. <laughs> you shouldn't do that, by the way. No, sorry. <laughs> I'm leaving that in the video. So what do you, That's what why kind of rifle is that? This is a a Mauser K98. It's an eight millimeter rifle. That's the old World War II rifles, huh? Yeah, actually, I think well, I won't go back and see that yet. Oh yeah. The sights on these old school ones are crazy because you would adjust the rear sight um, hmm. by sliding this guy down, mm -hmm. and there's a ramp, so this would set up higher. Mm. So you'd set your elevation. You would have to know what these numbers actually mean. Oh dear. <laughs> and you'd adjust it so it raised the sight up, so that you'd have to tilt it down more yeah. than one up at the front sight. Nice. But yeah, yeah, this one was actually used. A lot of these were used. This is a 12 gauge, 20 gauge, 20 gauge shotgun shell, and then a 22 rifle round. Mm. So you would shoot a rifle and a rifle round and a shotgun round at the same time. Ah. Two barrels together, and then um, it's got two different triggers. So one for each side. You can't pull both of them. Well, you could pull both of them at the same time if you wanted oh, to. Okay, I think I've seen that in the movie. And then this you is your release to unfold it. Yeah. And load it. And see, these popped out whenever I pulled it open. Yeah. Those would eject the old shells out okay. when you pulled it open. So like, and those would flip them out. I see. You're supposed to never put your finger on the trigger unless you're ready to shoot. Yeah. Uh, you're never supposed to point the firearm at anything you're not willing to kill or destroy ever mm. even if you know it's unloaded mm. and you need to be aware of what's behind wherever you're shooting mm. so even if i was going to shoot michael somebody could be in the room behind him or standing behind him all right and a bullet doesn't always just stop on the first target so you need to be aware of all those things when you shoot okay that's why at like a gun range they have a big concrete backstop and it actually slopes up at an angle so that when the bullets hit it they they go up into a barrier and stop. okay Usually, if you're not going to shoot the gun, you just hold your finger like this. Even like if you're aiming at something until you're ready and then you would shoot. Oh, okay. So, and that's what I was saying. You were flagging them earlier. If you point the gun at somebody, that's called flagging them. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, and even though you know it's unloaded, people really don't like <laughs> if you point something at them. Yeah, the only one that stays out of the safe, like I said, is this one. Mm. It's on me. If it's not on me, it's in the safe. Hmm. So these are full metal jackets, like it's fully encased in metal. Yeah. Uh, the center is lead, the outside is copper. Copper's for mostly so you don't damage your barrel. These are more for practice shooting, because if you shoot, like I said earlier, you want to be aware of what's behind you. If you shoot somebody with this, it's going to go straight through them, because okay. it's just a solid chunk of metal. Okay. Um, if you shoot somebody with, say, these, which I, these are the ones I bought from my carry pistol. Yeah. These are hollow points. The tip is hollow. It is, So when yeah. you shoot somebody, as soon as it goes in them, it starts to mushroom and expand out like this. So it does more damage and it also slows down okay. so that it, it, you're less likely to shoot through them and hit oh, the person behind them. But yeah, it does more damage and it's less likely to over penetrate. This is a 30 at 6. So on these, the, the tip is softer. So these would do kind I'm of the same it. effect. Yeah, it doesn't feel softer to you, but impact wise, it would be softer. So these would do about the same effect as a hollow point, kind of. These would be for hunting or something like that. Yeah. So when you shoot a deer, um, you make sure bad. that you actually kill it. Yeah. But a lot of people don't like using hollow points and stuff like that on a deer because you have a chance of getting metal fragments in the meat. Right. So they'll use something like that with a soft point that still mushrooms out, but it won't fragment as badly. Mm. The firing pin hits this little primer in the back, causes a mini explosion that ignites the powder. Right. And then the powder builds up pressure and shoots the, the bullet out the front. Okay. And then this would be ejected out after you. I 3D printed this. Did you really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. It's got... You've got a 3D printer here. Nine millimeter in it. That's so fascinating. And I, I put all the lights in the safe and everything. Yeah. That, so. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Strobe lights. That's like a horror movie. Whoa. <laughs> An auto, I think, just switches the color. Mm. What are those cans for? These are actually CS smoke grenades. So these are um, like pepper spray yeah, or right. Michael, when he was in the Air Force, they would they would let these off in a room and he'd have to go in there without a gas mask on for training. Oh, okay, okay. Not pleasant. <laughs> no. Not at all. And, uh, they were... Well, Charles, that's quite impressive. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>